Okay, one of the other concepts about groundwater, groundwater uh, flow and movement uh, through the ground, uh, groundwater storage, uh, especially as it relates to not just movement and storage of groundwater in aquifers and throughout a watershed, but also uh, we have to do talk about uh, contamination and contaminant flow. And one of the um, other concepts that we want to, or I want to demonstrate here, is related to specific yield and specific retention. Um, it's related to the porosity and infiltration rate of uh, water through sediment, through rock in the ground. We measured porosity uh, and, and kind of got a sense of infiltration and permeability with uh, two of our sediments. Uh, we used some uh, medium well-sorted gravel and we used uh, kind of a medium fine well-sorted sand. Um, we saturated them so uh, to fill all the pore spaces up and so we can see that they are uh, saturated. You can actually see with the gravel uh, that uh, there is water there and the sand is now not its original color because it's all been saturated. So we have these uh, little apparatus here um, and what it is is a tube and as you can see that there is a screen uh, in at the bottom of the uh, tube and what we're going to do is dump the sediment with the water into this tube and the screen is there one to hold make sure no gravel or sand get through or silt or clay whatever we have um, but also to let the water uh, continue flowing through now we know how much water we actually put in the gravel uh, we had 100 milliliters of gravel we filled it up with a certain amount of water uh, I believe it was 50 milliliters of water um, which shows us that the porosity would be 50% or if it were 40 milliliters of water it would be 40% 40, 40 over 100 50 over 100 uh, converted into percent so we know that there's a certain amount of water in there and we actually want to see how much water comes through there are cups at the base of this apparatus um, to collect the water um, some water may stay with the gravel and or the sand and we expect we would expect some water to continue flowing through and be drawn down by gravity so uh, and we can get a sense of how much water uh, is collected and how much water stays with the sand or the gravel how much water collects in these cups and how quickly that occurs so there's actually several things that we want to observe uh, with uh, specific yield and specific retention um, with the specific yield being how much water is collected in these cups and the specific retention uh, being related to how much water uh, we know how much water is in here in the pore spaces 50 milliliters how much stays in the gravel does not travel through it because it's uh, electrostatically attracted to the gravel and how much actually continues flowing through due to gravity into the cup. That would be our yield. The retention is what is retained by the gravel. So let's uh, see how quickly this occurs, or slowly, uh, in, in perhaps, um, and how much water we can collect. So I'm gonna take this beaker of the gravel and the water and dump it into my apparatus and the water will collect in that cup. And let's see how quickly it happens and how much water we get. And you can see that that was very rapid over in a couple seconds, probably two or three or four seconds. We got a certain amount of water in there. Now we could measure that amount of water, but we do once want to, I'm not going to actually measure it, but it's just to show that this is my yield, my specific yield. And whatever is left within the gravel is the specific retention. Some of that water stays attracted or bound to the gravel in uh, this tube apparatus. Now let's try it with the sand and see if uh, it occurs as quickly or if we get as much uh, water with our sand. Let's dump that in there. Come on, everybody out, there we go. drama uh, and that's to show us and prove a point and that's why I chose the sand 
and the gravel for two very uh, contrasting results. Uh, the sand, the water uh, that was in the pore spaces, now with the porosity, it had the same porosity. It was the same volume of water that was filling up the same volume of sand. There was 100 mils of sand, there was about 50 milliliters of water in the pore spaces, the same as there was for the gravel. So the same amount of water, and yet no water. So the yield, um, zero there, and all that, those 50 milliliters of water is still here. So not only is, uh, we would have to wait quite a long time, uh, and maybe too long for this video, certainly too long for this, um, to get any kind of yield, but just how quickly that occurred with uh, the gravel. And we did get a yield. And so specific retention, specific yield, something that a geologist, a hydrogeologist is going to consider uh, when uh, there is groundwater contamination, or let's not consider the bad things, just thinking about groundwater flow and uh, the maximum amount of water that can be stored and transmitted through an aquifer for potable use.